Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. The topic of our lecture today about cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So, what are the objectives? The definition: of CIN, risk factors, pathogenesis, epidemiology, pathology, grades, diagnosis, prognosis of CIN management and pregnant patient with CIN, what to do. Okay, let us start with the definition of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which is abbreviated by CIN. It's a very common abbreviation, CIN. It means presence of atypical cells inside cervical epithelium without basement membrane invasion. So, it is not invasive. Is a precancerous lesion. There is no invasion to basement membrane, but there is a typical cells in the epithelium of the surface. Okay. So CIN is a pre-malignant squamous lesion of the uterine cervix, and this pre-malignant squamous lesion diagnosed by cervical biopsy and histologic examination. Okay. Okay. What about risk factors? The most important risk factor is human papilloma virus infection, especially type 16 and 18. And the type 16 is responsible for more cases of cervical carcinoma than type 18. Okay? So, human papilloma virus infection, especially certain serotypes like 16 and 18. Also, in immunocompromised state, in an HIV infection, in a smoking person, multiple sexual partner is considered also another risk factors with possibility of sexual transmitted disease, especially the human papilloma virus infection. So we wanna know more about human papilloma virus infection. It is a sexual transmitted disease and it has a significant risk factor for development of CIN. Okay, I said before that there is certain serotypes like 16 and 18. 16 human papilloma virus is the most carcinogenic and account for up to 60% of cervical cancer worldwide. While human papilloma virus 18 is the second most carcinogenic and account for 10 to 15% of cervical cancer. So, what about the pathogenesis? Yes, the, 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 the story starts with human papilloma virus infection and its persistence in metaplastic epithelium of the cervical transformation zone. This area is the most dangerous site in the cervix, the transformation, transformation zone, which is the area between primary and the secondary columnar junction, where metaplasia happens and the columnar change it to be squamous epithelium. So this is an active area. So with resistant human papilloma virus infection in the metaplastic epithelium of the cervical transformation, transformation zone, it can lead to dysplastic cellular changes. Okay? Although low-grade dysplasia, like Cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 1, CIN1, usually regress, it can progress to high grade dysplasia, CIN2 or CIN3. So we have three grades, CIN1, 2, and 3. The most dangerous is CIN2 and 3. CIN1 usually resolve spontaneously, okay? But in some cases, may progress to CIN2 and 3. Okay, cervical cancer occurs when high-grade lesion extend beyond the basement membrane of the cervical epithelium. And you should know that approximately up to 20% of women with high-grade dysplasia will develop invasive cervical cancer within 10 years, maybe, if left untreated. So, it is very important. That's why there is a screening program for cervical cancer to diagnose the precancerous region CIN, 1, 2, and 3, and even the 
the early invasion of the basement membrane, so diagnose cancer in early stage, okay? Okay, what about epidemiology? Human Babylonia virus infection occurs in sexually active women, but is more common in adolescent and women under the age of 30. These young women are the most likely to clear the infection to undetectable levels in an average of eight months. So, those with sex sexually active women, young women, can clear the infection within eight months, okay? But the problem is if the human papilloma virus persists after the age of 30. So, women over the age of 30 with human papilloma virus detected are more likely to have a persistent infection and warrant more aggressive follow-up to rule out cervical intravascular neoplasia. Cervical cancer incidence and the mortality have decreased in developed countries due to screening program using the pap smear and human papilloma virus DNA type, especially the high risk types, serotypes, okay? Test, okay? So, what about the path pathology by neck to eye? Maybe non specific. You may see nothing, nothing abnormal, or highly suspicious cervix with ulceration or erosions. By microscopic examination, a tibia affects certain epithelial sickness, atypical cells affecting certain epithelial sickness without basement membrane invasion. So there is no basement membrane invasion. That's why we call it CIN, cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. Okay. The classic microscopic description of human papilloma virus infection of cervical epithelial cells is chylocytosis. This term refers to the appearance of what perinuclear halo within the cell along with enlarged and irregular nuclei that show evidence of mitosis. This is as regards the microscopic examination. We have three grades of CIN, one, two, and three. CIN1, the old name is mild dysplasia. A typical cells affect deepest third of the epithelium only, CIN2, moderate dysplasia, a tibia reaches the middle third of the epithelium, CIN3, severe dysplasia, a tibia reach superficial third of the epithelium. You can look to the grades here, different types of grade according to the epithelial system by, uh, published by WHO, and also the old terminology by the WHO, and the grading according to CIN 1, 2, and 3. Let us start from below upwards. Cervical intraepithelial nucleosia system. When I ask you about the cervical intraepithelial nucleosia system, you will say there may be normal or human papilloma virus or CIN 1 or 2 or 3 or invasive cancer. Okay? As regards the old WHO terminology, the, 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 the may be normal or human papilloma virus infection or mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, severe dysplasia, okay? But this name is not used nowadays, okay? According to, we see the, from updated WHO terminology, we have negative for intraepithelial lesion or malignancy, we have low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, and we have a gray zone with atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance and the atypical squamous cells suspicious for high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Okay? The high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion correlate with CIN2 and the 3. Okay. The low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion correlate with CIN1. Okay. Okay, what about diagnosis, symptoms, signs and investigations and the screening test? The symptoms the woman may have no symptoms, asymptomatic. And this is the majority of cases, so 
this is the rule of screening program to discover such cases, okay? Or the woman may complain of contact bleeding, post bleeding, or vaginal spotting, or vaginal discharge. When you examine the cervix, signs may be non-specific, ranging from normally appearing cervix to highly suspicious cervix with ulceration. But to us, what is very important is the investigation by screening test for cervical cancer. Okay. What is a screening test? Cervical cytology, we we'll call it PAP test or PAP smear, or testing for human papilloma virus, high risk serotypes. And in low resource countries, we can use via test visual inspection of the cervix after application of acetic acid 5%. Okay. Then, if we found abnormal cytology or abnormal or positive test for human papilloma virus risk, okay, we can go ahead to colposcopy and pipes. Okay, so what about cervical screening? The BAP test, as I said, it's called the BAP smear or cervical cytology. This is a Babaniclo test, okay? We collect cervical cells using sight brush or IRS spatula, then examine the cells changes caused by human papilloma virus that may turn into cervical cancer. As regard the human uh, papilloma virus test, check for infection with high risk human papilloma virus types that can cause cervical cancer like, like types 16 and 18 and so on. Or we may use the human papilloma virus and BAP co-test if we use human papilloma virus with BAP test, with each other, we call it CO test. Okay, so if I use the expression of CO test, you understand now we are using both of them. So, as you see in the picture, this is how to do cervical BAP smear, cervical smear using cytobrush as is here or iris spatula the top picture here this is iris spatula and this is a cytobrush we put it on the external os and rotate it 360 and another 360 degree then take the sample and spread it on slide and fix with a the spray then send it to the lab for cytological evaluation or another cytobrush can also be inserted inside bottle containing saline and send the auto also for cytological evaluation. Okay. What about visual inspection with acetic acid? We apply acetic acid 5% over the ecto cervix in the transformation zone. If there is acetohyte area in the transformation zone, this is considered positive if there is no acetohyte area it is negative and it is helpful in low resource countries when BAP test is not available or may or also the human papilloma virus test is not available so at least you can do via test because it is very cheap and available okay and can be done easily so this is important in low resource countries and it can be used as a screening test, okay? So what about survival screening program? According to United States Preventive Service Task Force, we will start at the age of 21 to at, at, at age of 21. From age of 21 to age of 29 years, then at, at the age of 30 up to 65, what we are going to do? First pap test should be done at the age of 21, okay? Then do pap test every three years. 
Now the woman reached age of 30. We are going to do one of the following missions. The human papilloma virus test every five years or coup test, which is considered, as I said before, combination of human papilloma virus and the BAP test every five years or BAP test every three years till the age of 65. Okay, this is the cervical screening program. But according to the American Cancer Society, the updated knowledge coming from American Cancer Society, updated cervical cancer screening guidelines from American Cancer Society recommend starting screening at the age of 25 with human papilloma virus test. And having human papilloma virus testing every five years through age 65. Okay? So what is new? He said you can do human papilloma virus at the age of 25, then repeat it every five years till the age of 65. This is the additive knowledge. However, the previous screening program, as I said, is acceptable also. Then if you found a positive result with BAP test or human papilloma virus test, Go ahead to colposcopy with directed blood. Because the diagnosis ultimately requires tissue sampling, but there are exceptions to this rule for women aged less than 25 with low grade squamous intraabesidial lesion. Cytology. Because of high rate of disease resolution, spontaneous resolution happened. Okay? So don't you can you, you may be not in need to do any corposcopy or corposcopy directed biopsy you may just repeat the cytology at 12 months so we said before that young age there is spontaneous resolution of cin1 and also spontaneous resolution of human lower virus infection so you can just repeat the BAP test after one year, okay? okay? This is the exception. Okay, so as I said before, one of the most important risk factors is human papilloma virus type 16 and 18. So if we give the girls at very young age human papilloma virus vaccination may be protected from CIN and cervical carcinoma. So there is, there are today two available vaccination, Gardasil and Cervarex. Gardasil protect against four types of human papilloma virus, 6, 11, 16, and 18, okay? And we know that type 16 and 18 are the cause of most cervical cancer. Type 6 and 11 causing gentle warts, 90% of this, okay? So, these four serotypes is very important. 6 and 11 causing gentle wart, 16 and 18 causing cervical carcinoma or CIN. So, where the seed containing four types, protect against four types of human blue virus, okay? First dose is given at the school age, at the age of 12 and 13, then second dose after 6 to 24 months, okay? So it is two doses. What about Cervarex? Also vaccine protect against human below virus types, 16 and 18 on, okay? It is given to the girls at the age of 9 years, two doses, each one half milli. The second dose is given between 5 and 13 months after the first dose. And this is how it locks the girl the seal and how it locks the server X. For patients who are candid for human blood virus vaccination, history of cervical dysplasia or genital wart is not a contraindication to vaccination. So, if, if she gave you a history of Genital warts, 
this is not a contraindication to vaccination. Vaccination doesn't have a therapeutic effect on pre-existing human papillomavirus infection or cervical dysplasia. Human papillomavirus vaccination is associated with lower rate of CIN recurrence. For patients who haven't previously received the human papillomavirus vaccination series, it is better to offer vaccination as a part of their management course. So, if she didn't take it at the school age, you can give it to her before the age of 25, okay? Patient risk for progression to cancer as regard the prognosis of CIN. Patient risk for progression to cancer is related to large part to their age and the CIN grade. So the most important two factors is the age of the woman and CIN grade. CIN often regresses spontaneously in younger patients, less than 25 years compared with more than 25 years. And the risk for progression to cervical cancer is lower in this younger patient population. Okay? So, what about the grade? Low grade CIN, which is CIN1, or low grade squamous intrabacillar lesion, has a low potential for progression to malignancy. While high grade CIN, or high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or CIN2 or 3, has a higher potential for progression. Okay? So, what about management? First, we want to start approach to CIN. Management approach to CIN. The two main management approach to CIN are observation or treatment. Observation or treatment. Okay. Observation with human virus testing, cervical cytology, and or colposcopy. Okay, so I do follow up with cervical cytology, human papilloma virus testing, and or colposcopy. Okay, what about treatment? Treatment with excision or ablation of cervical transformation zone, which is the most dangerous site. The choice between treatment option is discussed in detail elsewhere. Okay. later on in the next slides, okay? Hysterectomy is unacceptable as a primary treatment for CIN in most instances. As I said before, CIN 1, for example, spontaneous resolution, CIN 2 and 3, I have other options like ablation, like leave, and so on. So, hysterectomy is rarely done. Management of CIN. Okay. Precancerous lesions are managed conservative for those women younger than 25. Okay. As I said before, they are at very low risk because spontaneous resolution will happen. The majority of abnormal findings in women younger than 25 are low risk cervical dysplasia and will resolve spontaneously. Okay. Okay. Colposcopy evaluate persistent or Abnormal cytology or lesions suspected to be greater than low risk, these are managed according to finding. Low risk lesions may be watched and re evaluated more frequently, and the high risk lesions are treated based on size, location, and the stage. What we are going to do to CIN1 and what we are going to do with CIN2 or higher. Here we concentrate on women over 25, okay? Okay. CIN1 can undergo observation and co-testing repeated in one year, okay? So after one year, repeated. If CIN1 is persistent after two years or progresses within that time, treatment should be recommended. Okay, okay. We expect CIN1 to be improved or remain as, a, as, a, as, as it is, CIN1. Okay, so there is no risk. But if progressing after two years to CIN2 or 3, 
So you should treat. What about CIN2 or higher? It requires treatment in many women. Treatment is also recommended when there is more than one degree of difference between BAB result and the biopsy result. If there is difference between the results of BAB test and the biopsy result, also treatment is recommended. What is the usual treatment? Either ablation or excision of abnormal cells. Lock to the staple, please. This is the ablative procedure available. Cryotherapy, laser ablation, diathermic coagulation. Some may use cryotherapy also, see and treat. In certain situation, you are not waiting the result you are. When you see the pathologic area, you can manage immediately by cryotherapy, okay? So, cryotherapy, laser ablation, diathermic coagulation, okay? Ablation is only acceptable when the endocervical sampling is negative. There are no glandular abnormalities. The entire border of the lesion are visible. So, this is important items to, do, to use the ablative procedure, okay? Otherwise, you will be, you will use another aggressive excisional procedure. Okay? okay. What about excisional procedure like loop electrosurgical excision procedure, leap, or laser conization or cold knife conization? But this procedure, if the woman in childbearing age and wanted to be pregnant, there may be risk of incompetence of the cervix, preterm labor, and so on. Women treated for CIN2 or greater should have baby smear and human papilloma virus testing after one and the two years, okay, after the procedure. When margins are positive, repeat cytology testing within four to six months accompanied by endocervical cartilage. This is very important. What about if we have case with persistent or recurrent CIN2 or 3? I repeat excisional procedure. This is one option for treatment of persistent or recurrent CIN2 or 3. But in some circumstances, patient completing her completed her family, patient may choose treatment with hysterectomy, which would be an option for recurrent high-risk CIN, okay? What about pregnant patient with CIN? Should I do something? Okay, pregnant patient with CIN1 are re-evaluated with colposcopy postpartum. So don't do nothing, just do follow-up postpartum with examination by colposcopy, okay? Pregnant patient with CIN2 and 3 in whom invasive cervical cancer is not suspected. So it is non-invasive, it's the pre-cancerous, CIN2 or 3, no invasion to basement membrane. The woman can be observed with colposcopy and cytology every 12 weeks during the pregnancy. Or Evaluation can be deferred until postpartum. Some prefer to, to do colposcopy and cytology every 12 weeks during the pregnancy, and some prefer to do the evaluation postpartum. Okay? The biopsy is repeated if the appearance of the lesion worsens or if cytology suggests invasive disease. So when the biopsy is repeated, if the appearance of the lesion worsens, or if cytology suggests invasive, so biopsy is repeated. Okay. What about endocervical sampling or endometrial? Can I do it? No. During pregnancy, of course, no. So don't perform any endocervical sampling or endometrial sampling. Treatment is performed only 
if invasive disease assessment. So treatment is performed only if invasive disease is suspect. This is as regard CIN in pregnant patient. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you, everybody. This is my box published with Amazon textbook of obstetric textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, and the newcomer medical disorder in pregnancy published one week ago on Amazon. So please go to Amazon this link to find my box. And this is my link on YouTube channel and my link on Blogspot. My best wishes for all of you.